Hello. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. How's everybody doing? Hope you're having a fantastic week so far. Yes, we have been like busy little bees over here at Makers Gonna Learn working on lots of fun and exciting things we haven't announced yet. Right. I typically hate when people do that, but here I am. Here we are. are. We are working on things we have not announced yet and you all are gonna just love it. I'm so excited. Um, but for today, we're gonna be doing an etching tutorial. Super exciting, new-ish way of etching. I wanna like put it in quotations. Etching. etching. Um, so if you guys stay tuned, we're gonna show you exactly what we mean by that. We are gonna be doing a little mini design space tutorial. Um, Lauren thought that the image we used today was a file and I was like, no, I used fonts and images. So I literally, like I think you all are going to, your mind is gonna be blown at this etching technique. Yeah. But I also think that the real meat of this tutorial is gonna be from learning how Alicia puts all of her, like uses all of her different fonts and pairing fonts together mm -hmm. to create what I thought was one of our cut files. Yeah, so little design space tutorial in there for you because the etching portion of this is so fast and so easy. It's gonna blow y'all's mind. You know etching normally is a long, pro like drawn out process. Right. Not today, not today. Not today. So anyways, um, we are gonna be doing that here in a few minutes, but we did wanna let y'all know that we're extending the sublimation sale. Literally one just one day. Yes. Just one day, just mm -hmm. for today, that's it. Going ahead and extending that. Uh, $70 off the sublimation course, bringing it down to 127, no code needed. So if you have been on the fence about sublimation and you want to jump over, now is the time to do it where we teach you which printers are best, how to set your printers up, getting your colors correct, teaching you how to sublimate, how to print, all of this good stuff. Um, jumping in on that course now is going to be definitely be th the thing to do mm -hmm. because we are going to be doing a upgrade to the course, adding a lot more files to the course, um, and then we are going to be doing a price increase. However, if you jump in on it today at 127, no code needed, then you can get all those updates for free. Yes, every time we update it, you get them. And you get so. lifetime access. It's not a membership, it's just a one time fee. Mm -hmm. So get it's, it while the getting's good. It's like a little. It's like a little secret membership, if you will, because we do keep it updated as much as we can, and we're about to make some really, really huge updates, and I'm going to show you all. We put out a tutorial yesterday on 3D sublimation tumblers. If you haven't seen those, I'm going to show you the tumblers today, and then if you're like, ooh, I want to make those, you can go watch that tutorial if you already have the things to make sublimation tumblers, or you can join on the course and then make your own. Yes. So that's gonna be really fun. These are some of the files that we have not released yet, but we will be releasing. So that's a little bit exciting in my opinion. So exciting. Yes. Also, Gloria asked, is it gonna be messy? No. No, Gloria, not we got all. your back, girl. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite part. I, now, don't get me wrong. I do like to get my hands dirty and messy and crafting sometimes. The only times that I don't are with etching cream and with resin. I was working with resin all morning Ew. today, so I'm like, oh, I hate that feeling on my hands. But this is like the clean girl's way to do etching. So <laughs> you guys are exciting. really going to love that. Yes. Yeah, so um, I feel like there was one other thing I was going to mention, but I don't know. Does anyone have guesses to what we're going to do today? Any guesses on our etching technique? I feel like there's so many different techniques for things out there. Oh, yeah. Um, it's like a loose term, but we can go ahead. I mean, we can go ahead and jump into Let's it. Let's do it. Okay. If y'all have questions about the sublimation course or anything like that, please feel free to drop those in the comments. If you've got questions on the tutorial, we've got the chat box to open. Sadie is answering questions. Lauren's answering questions. And so will I. Um, but I do want to show you these sublimation tumblers really fast. Okay. Also, if you didn't watch Lauren's webinar last Thursday, I'm going to need you all after you watch this live stream to go watch it, especially if you're considering sublimation because she goes over so many good, just like good basic things that you're going to want to know. And she kind of scratches the surface of what's inside of the course. And so whenever you get in the course, you go into way more depth 
But I don't know. I feel like that was a very informative, a very informative video for our sublimation people. Yes. So, okay, this is what we made in yesterday's tutorial. L these are 3D sublimation. Are you kidding me? Like, I don't know if you guys are really, I, in real life, these look amazing, okay? They're gorgeous. They're like the prettiest tumblers I've ever seen in my life. Mm. Um, so these are going to be in the new files that we're releasing in the sublimation course. So if you already have purchased it, you are going to get these 3D sublimation files. They're beautiful. I'm obsessed. So I just wanted to show you those because they've been sitting around the office and I was like, I think they would really love to see those. They're beautiful. Yeah. Um, one thing that I just now noticed. What? Did we forget to zoom out the overhead camera? Okay. Oh, you got, was that like really close to it? was like super close. <laughs> it was well, you so guys close. got a zoomed in shot. I think I can reach. Can you, t can you, other way? Nope. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I can get it. Woo! Oh my gosh. Well, I don't kill myself. Oh, that's the opposite way. Hold on just two seconds. Oh, that chair is so cracked, everybody. I'm not stepping on it. I'm stepping on the bottom. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm Are your, they getting a good shot of this right here? I'm your uh, back spot for cheerleading. Is cheerlead. that better? Okay. Five, Yay. six, seven, eight. <laughs> One, <Dismount>. two. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. We're good. Okay. Can you guys see it? Well, did you get a close-up? You're welcome. I did that on purpose, actually. So there you go. Uh, okay, so let's just, I'm going to go ahead and jump into design space and then we're going to go over the supplies after I show you all this little tutorial. So let's hop over into Cricut Design Space. Um, I don't know if this computer has updated Design Space. It looks like it has. So Design Space is updated. Things are in like weird order a little bit. Um, nothing crazy. It wasn't a huge update or anything, but I'm going to open up the file. This is the one I created, but we're going to be recreating this. So I actually used fonts and images from the Makers Going to Learn membership and created this image. So this just goes to show you, you don't have to use pre-made images. If, I mean, you can use some and kind of manipulate them to make them look how you want. So what we're going to do is go get all of the fonts that we need and the images that we need. So let's go to makersgonnalearn.com. I'm going to close out some of this stuff. Okay, so we are logged in. Once you get into the membership, if you're brand new here and you're like, what are you talking about? We are a membership-based crafting community. And whenever you sign up for the membership, you get access to these cut files and fonts. There are thousands upon thousands of all of it. So I'm going to go into our cut files and we're going to get our little football first, okay? You can use whatever football that your heart desires. We've got lots of different options. So I'm just gonna search for footballs. So real quickly, okay. the 3D sublimation tumblers, the video got uploaded yesterday, correct? Yes. On how to create them? Yes. There you go. Mm-hmm. Miss P was asking. Okay, yes, it came out yesterday. Is it me? Testing, 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 testing. Our mics is are messing me? up. Is it Lauren's necklace that she found? It took a while. Oh, okay. Is okay. it better now? If it's both of us? Oh, do I sound muffled? Okay, okay. now. <laughs> okay, Sadie's telling us our mics are muffled. If we sound bad, you guys can let us know in the chat. Um, so I downloaded my little football right here. It's called American Football. The links are all in the description if you all need them. I'm going to open this zip folder, which is going to unzip my folder. This is going to give me access to the images that are inside of the folder. So you got to unzip it to open it up. I'm going to double click it and you can see I've got a PNG and an SVG here. I am doing a cut image, so I need an SVG. So I'm just gonna keep that there and open up Design Space. We're gonna go to Upload on the left panel here. Go to Upload Image. And then I can go back to my Finder and there's my SVG. Or you, if you're using a Windows, you can go back to your Downloads, your Recents, that's typically where it's gonna live. And then I have my Cut Image and I will upload that there. So 
select the image and we're gonna add it to our canvas, okay? So here's our football. I like to get all my elements before I start designing and then I can adjust as needed. Now we need to get three different fonts. So let's go back to the Maker's Gonna Learn website. I've got our fonts right here. Now I know which fonts I want, but typically if you're looking for them and you're like, I really want a script font, you can go to this font style drop down menu and you can see there's script, you can see our newest fonts, monograms, yada yada. There's lots of different options. But today we're gonna to be using three different ones. And the first one is a newer font. It's called Giddy Up. I have not gotten a chance to use this font and it is so cute. Look at that. Yeah, I know, I love Giddy Up. Me too, it's one of my favorites. So we're gonna download that. It's going to pop into this zip folder. We're gonna unlock the zip folder and then you're gonna to need to double click this .otf. So you can see Giddy Up right here, double click and install. Then I'm gonna go back to our website. The next font we're gonna need is Plain Jane. Okay, this one's super cute. Hit the download button, double click it to unzip it, double click it again, and, and install. Excuse me. And then we've got our third font, which is called Goldie. I don't know why I cannot remember the name of this font. Is Plain Jane a newer one or have we had it? I feel like a couple months ago we got it. Like Plain Jane is a really good blocky, blocky, plain, because sometimes you need plain. You do, font. you do. It's a very, it's a font that I would go back to a lot. Oh, for sure. And use a lot because it's like clean. It's going to cut nicely because it's no, there's no like pattern in it. So yeah, that's a good one. Okay, we've got all of our fonts. Now, I just want to let y'all know on a little secret, and I don't know if it's a secret or if I'm just, I don't know. But normally, whenever you upload fonts, you can go to view and reload. Let me save my project first. I'm gonna save this. Normally when I download fonts, I go to view and reload, and all my fonts upload into Design Space. Okay, we've been doing this for like two years now. Mm -hmm. And it's been fine. Right. Um, that's not working now. Let me just show you. Whenever I go, I'm gonna type Why out. Is cla normally Classy only does that when if the, the font, font is not, not installed. installed. So that font is Goldie. Let me show you all. I'm gonna right. select this. So typically if I go to my system fonts and I type in Goldie, my font's gonna be here. Okay, it is here. Let me just, let me see if the other ones are here. Let's just look, giddy up. Okay. Yep, it's there. Let's see if Plain, Plain Jane. Jane. I don't know if we had that one installed. Yes, it worked. Okay. okay, so on my computer, the past two days, it's making me, up. whenever I upload a font, it's making me completely close out Design Space and then reopen it. Are you in beta or are you in? I shouldn't be in beta. I shouldn't be. I probably should double check that. But anyways, if you're having issues, like after you install the fonts, if you're refreshing your Design Space and your fonts aren't coming into your font book, in Design Space, just restart Design Space. That's where I was going with all of that. So anyways, all of our fonts are in here, so good for us. Um, I'm going to be using Goldie for our first font, and I'm gonna actually move this out of the way and zoom in a little bit here. So classy until kickoff. Are y'all ready for football? I feel like August 1st, it's like, Okay, it's go time. It's, it's go, go time. time. <laughs> Recruitments should be about finished. Fixing this. Yes. Start. I mean, I get it. I'm, I'm ready. There. What is the the first Vols game is September first, I think. Uh -huh, I think so. Um, I'm really excited about football. I just love football season, like that time of year. It's I think just... it's I think it's like the crisp fallness, like the the crispiness of the air of the morning, but then it warms up about kickoff time, and yes. it's just something about it. I don't I know. I love it. It's just a good time of year. So, Gloria said that hers has been having issues, too. Chrissy says, I find design space laggy recently. Yes. I, I personally tend to have the most issues with design space when Cricut does something new. Uh-huh. I.e. come out with a new machine or yes. try to update some stuff. Yeah, is when it on. tends to get like laggy until they work all the bugs out. Yeah. So that's probably what it is, just FYI. 
Um, and then Kathy says, beta, question mark, y'all speak in a language I don't understand. So uh, sometimes, or a lot of times, what will happen, beta is like a test version of Cricut Design Space. So like when they do updates. So when they do updates... And sometimes beta doesn't always give you, sometimes beta is a lot more laggy than the live version. Mm -hmm. So what happens without trying to get too like scientific with you guys, but what happens when they roll new things out or when anything before anything is released, not just Cricut Design Space, you have an alpha version. So the A, the first version, right. which is just tested in house. Mm -hmm. And then you have a beta version, which is then sent out to a limited, a amount, limited of amount of people, users to try it out, and then they go on with a live version. Yeah. So you can change Design Space to a beta version in your settings if manually. you want. Manually, if yeah. you want to. So sometimes we're like functioning in the beta version when we're trying to keep up with all the newest updates. Yeah. But I try to switch out because it's glitchy sometimes. Right. So, okay, so I've got this line of text this line and then this one so we've got goldie plain jane and then giddy up and our football now kickoff is on two lines all i did was i just after kick i hit enter and put off on another line but you can see this huge gap in between here and i really do not like having those gaps so what i will typically do is select the text box i'll go to advanced and ungroup to lines and this gives me the freedom to move that bottom line of text wherever I want. And then right here, I can kind of bump these up so they fit nicely. I always, whenever I'm making designs, especially with words, I try to make the important words bigger. So you can see classy and kickoff are much bigger than until because until is like not really relevant. I mean, it is to make the sentence, but classy is like, okay, classy, I put it in a script and then kickoff is like, yee. How you know what right. I'm saying? So that was kind of my design. <laughs> because we're wondering my design thought process, that was it. And so now I'm just going to stretch this football a little bit bigger, kind of the height of the text, and I just tilted it a little bit. But I don't love that the text is just right overlapping all of this. So what I am going to do is move this guy to the side. I'm gonna select all of this text and we're gonna add an offset. Now this is where I really, really, really want you guys to pay attention. Yes. Super important to pay attention at this point. Yes. Okay. So I don't want it, you can see this blue outline. This is where our offset's gonna land. That is way too big for me. I'm gonna do like a 0.15. Even that's a little big for me. Let's do 0.13. Oh, that's perfect. Actually, 0.1. That feels better. That, that feels right. Yes. So now what I'm going to do is hit apply. Okay. You're like, well, what are you doing? Now what we're going to need to do, I'm just going to drag our little football over here. Just nestle it up right behind our text. Okay. While my football is selected in my layers panel, I'm going to select my offset layer. Okay. okay. I have both layers selected. And then we're going to go slice. Are you about to say something? Nope. Okay. And now I'm going to get rid of all of these slice results. Now you can see over here in the panel where everything is living. Okay. This is what you're left with. So you can see, we can see our text much better now. And our little football is out here. Now, the only other thing that I want to do with this image right here is, do you see these little dots like in between the letters? I don't like that. So I'm going to select just my football and I'm going to go to my contour function down here on the bottom and I'm going to click on those and that's going to get rid of them on my canvas. Okay. You can see they're lighter than the other ones. And then we're going to X off of that. And that is my whole image. Any questions? Does anybody, everybody's being real, real quiet in the chat, I feel like. Okay. Maybe everybody's taking notes and okay. really, really paying attention, which is great. But yep. if you all have any questions about what Alicia just did, because this is a design hack that I truly feel like everyone, if you are a Cricut user and you love like 
taking things Layering. and making them your own, mm -hmm. this is something that you definitely need to have in your back pocket yeah, to and, remember how to do this. And lots of people ask us how to create their own files. This is a great way to use Design Space to create your own files. Right. Because you can use the Makers Gonna Learn text and images and make your own images. Or cut files that you have already purchased by chance. Yeah. You can manipulate those and use certain pieces of them to make other things that mm -hmm. you want. Very true. So now the only thing that we need to do next is make it a cohesive image. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. What I'm going to do for this specific image is select everything and attach it. Okay, I'm just going to attach everything. So now you can see under this attach, everything is all together. We get to also technically unite it, but it's one, six one way, half a dozen the other. So um, I'm going to attach it. Now, before we cut anything, before we do any of that, I'm going to need to make sure that my sizing is correct. So let's go overhead. I've got my wine glass. I've used a stemless wine glass for the other one. This is just a stemmed wine glass that we had. Can y'all see that good? Okay. Now, working with wine glasses is different because there's a curved surface. Now, we're not using stencil vinyl like ordinarily we would use stencil vinyl or permanent vinyl and etching cream. We are using a type of adhesive vinyl today, okay? So I'm going to be needing to measure my surface and keeping in my mind that we are putting vinyl on a curved surface. So there's potential for bubbles and stuff. So we don't want to be measuring from the very top all the way down here. That's not where we want to measure. I want to stay up near this flat surface as much as I can to prevent bubbling around the edges of my vinyl. So I'm going to try to stick with like... No, I mean, honestly, I'm going to I'm going to start my zero right where I would want my vinyl to start. So I'm pulling my zero line right there and say, let's not go any taller than three inches. Okay. So back in design space, I've got my image selected. It's locked and I'm going to change my height to three. So while she is also doing that, I know we've had a lot of people that are Yes, love the hacks. Some people are saying, I'm lost, totally new, rookie. So this is a more, if you are a complete rookie, mm -hmm. what we have done today in creating this and pairing fonts and everything else is a little bit more of an, an I would think, on the advanced side of design yes. space. But the good part about this is you all can always go back and rewatch this mm -hmm. as many times as you want to get it figured out. Yes, for sure, for sure. So if I sped through that a little too fast, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. But you can go watch, it, like Lauren was saying, as many times as you need to to get the hang of it. Once you do it a few times, especially this technique, I feel like it's very easy to catch on to. Yes. Like after you do it, you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm just basically all we're doing is creating an offset on our text and then slicing the offset out of our image. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the, the simple way to put it. So now I just resized my image. Everything is attached together. We're three inches in height. And now all we need to do is go to make it. Now I'm gonna hide. I'm just gonna actually delete our old image. This is our old one. We'll just delete him. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to make it. All right, now, before we go to cut anything, let's go over what you're gonna need to actually etch this because we're about to start using the secret product we haven't told you about yet. So let me show you all. This is the original one that I made, okay? It looks beautiful and etched, right? Like I feel like this looks perfectly etched with etching cream. Uh -huh. this, this was not. So we actually used permanent frosted Cricut premium vinyl. This is just like an opaque vinyl, y'all. Let me show you what it looks like when you kind of peel it off. So it is Cricut brand. Um, I don't know that there's other brands that, I'm sure there's other brands that sell this opaque um, permanent frosted vinyl, but this Cricut brand is really good. I'm trying to get the edge up for y'all so you can see what it looks like. But this is an absolute great way to get the etching effect, especially if you are 
sensitive to chemicals. Yes, yes. And with me being pregnant, I feel like this is a great alternative for someone. If you're a pregnant crafter or if you have other sensitivities, you can see this is the frosted side right here. So it's still like a little see-through. Um, but it gives that perfect etching effect. So all you're going to need. It even kind of feels like it has, yes. a, it has the same similar feeling to etching. Yes, it does. It like has. It has a texture feel. Yeah, it's definitely, it's not smooth like normal vinyl. It's very much um, a textured vinyl. So I just need a small little section of this. You are going to need a, I won't say need. I will say need lightly. You should use a strong grip transfer tape to transfer this vinyl. I think because it's a little bit thicker and because it's textured, the strong grip works better. But I'm using a medium to strong tack transfer tape. And this brand, let me tell you, I don't use this a lot, but it felt stickier than the other stuff that we normally use. Frisco Craft. This is from Frisco Craft. If we can go overhead, y'all can the see. the HCV transfer stuff? <laughs> it very well could be. It doesn't feel like our okay. medium tag. Okay. Um, but this is what I used, and it worked really well. Okay. Um, I could have been better off using a strong Cricut transfer tape, honestly, but we didn't have any on hand um, whenever I was making it. So this worked, and I was like, you know what? We're going to use what we have because we tell y'all to do that all the time. So we've so. already had... The question that you knew you would have. What? Is it dishwasher safe? Can you, or is it washable? Okay. So what we're going to do, because we have been super busy little bees here in the craft room mm -hmm. this, this week. What we will do is, I actually may go run and do that now. Stick it in the dishwasher for you guys. Yeah. And then come back to tomorrow's live and we'll show you the results. Yeah. Or we can stick it in after the live, whatever you want to do. Um, I meant to do it this morning, and I, I, I even put it on my to-do list. I put it in my journal, and I was like, I'm going to put that in the washing, or in the dishwasher so we can test it. But, y'all, I did a um, 10, testing 10-plus 10 vinyls video. I don't know when that comes out. Thursday? I don't know. Okay, we tested and dishwasher tested 10 vinyls. Okay, that's coming out Thursday, yep. I think. Um, so that, that was a pretty cool video. I mean... Really and truly, rule of thumb, it's already been said in the comments, handmade equals hand wash. That is going to up the longevity. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're going to be able to wash it. You're going to be able to yeah. hand wash it for sure. Yeah. Will you be able to put it into the dishwasher? We will test it out for you. Yes, I did test some regular permanent glossy Cricut vinyl in the dishwasher last week, and it was like, it was good, good to go. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that you really risk is bubbling because of the heat and the moisture and all that. Um, but we're going to test it for you guys, and we'll let you know how it goes tomorrow. Also, the live stream is at 2.30 tomorrow, okay? Instead of 1.30, it's at 2.30 tomorrow. Okay, so I put my vinyl on my mat. I put vinyl side up. So you can see this is the backer for this vinyl. This, I've got the vinyl side up, okay? So this is just standard adhesive vinyl. And then back in design space, you can see our design fits in this top left corner and then we are going to select continue okay i'm using the explore 3 today and with this being a cricut brand of vinyl they actually have cut settings for this specific permanent frosted vinyl which is really nice okay maybe let's type in frosted here we go here we go okay Premium vinyl, frosted, opaque. This is exactly what we're using. I'm going to hit done. And we're just using a fine point blade on default pressure. And we can go ahead and load this into our Cricut. Okie dokie. I'm so excited for y'all to see this. I love this. This is my, the, hands down, my new favorite way to etch. Hands down. Because I don't want to fool with like chemicals. I will say like real etching is definitely going to be a little bit more permanent. I'm on the real etching train still yet. But I I'm mean, also not pregnant. <clears throat> yes. And like I like to do, I'm still going to want to do real etching projects. But this is beautiful. Yes. And I was shocked mm -hmm. how well it did come out. I will say that. Yes, I am too. It really looks very real. I'll show you all again. A close-up of what this is what we are making 
So, I mean, it looks pretty legit, y'all. Pretty legit. Too legit. What are we making Too tomorrow? Too legit to quit. Last minute teacher gift. Oh, yeah. Last minute teacher gift. If you need a gift for your teacher, I've been seeing everybody's first day of school pictures today. They're so cute. I'm obsessed with seeing the first day of school outfits. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I'm like an outfit person. Y'all know I bought like five dresses for my baby shower? Yeah. Five. Okay, firstly, it wasn't really my fault because nothing fits me right now. I feel like Regina George. I'm like, this is all that fits me right now. <laughs> In her pink <laughs> tracksuit. <laughs> if you guys watch Mean Girls. Yes. Did Courtney say she's never seen Mean Girls before? Oh, Lord. I don't know. I hope she has. I hope so. Somebody recently was like, I quoted Mean Girls and I didn't think it was funny. And I was <gasps> like, that's funny. That's for Mean Girls. <laughs> Uh, Susan says that her Cricut Venture was delivered this morning from HSN, Stop. so ours should be here. I need to check the, um... Check the tracking! I need to check the tracking! It's on its way. We ordered it when y'all ordered it. So, it's on the way. We've gotten some cardstock. I ordered, we ordered some, like, off-brand cardstock and Cricut cardstock, and then we got the markers, vinyl... Mm -hmm. We got a bunch of stuff. I'm really excited. That is so fetch. See, Megan gets it. Megan gets it. All right, my stuff cut. I'm going to make sure before I pull it off of my mat that it cut. So I like to do this all the time. I just take a weeding tool and try to pull up some of my centers of my letters and make sure that they have cut before I remove it. Because if I unload it and try to cut it again, it may cut off a little bit. Um, and if I needed to cut it again, I could just hit the go button again and it would just, it would go. But it cut just fine. And so now I'm going to weed everything that I don't need. So I'm just going to start up here in the corner. Ours is not estimated to get here until the 4th. Ugh, that's not fair. I know. Well, when is that? Is that Friday? Yeah. I won't even be here. Um, will you still do videos for Explorer Maker? Absolutely. We're never going to not be doing videos for Explorer Maker. Really and truly, we got the venture to see, to test it out, one. Number two, give you all our honest review on how it works, what all it does, all of this good stuff. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons why we got it, but we are definitely... Still, the majority of our content is going to be focused around the Explorer and the Maker. Right. And, y'all, we love and adore Cricut, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, we're not sponsored by Cricut, which yes. is great for you all because we can give you a 100% honest opinion. Yeah. Unbiased. Like, no one's in our ear, like, don't say this. Make sure you say it this way. Like, we're just going to straight up tell you if it works or if it don't work. Yep. So, you know, we stand beside it. Like, we stand beside the Maker and Explore machines and all the other Cricut machines that we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you our honest, honest opinion. Okay. Uh, Cheryl, I also just ask us, if you all had to choose between a Maker or an Air 3, what would you choose? Oh, Because well, I already know our answer. I already know maker. your answer. A Maker. Yeah, me and Lauren are An maker original queens. Maker. Yes, not if the you Maker you can still three. find them, an original Maker. The original Maker is the GOAT. It's yeah. my favorite one. I gotta get my head in the screen because I can't see. <laughs> I can't hardly see to weed this. So I'm just so sorry you have to look at the back of my head for a second. Uh, I'm not seeing it yet. Okay. All right. We, uh, that's weeded. So y'all cannot see that. I'll hold it All up. All you can see is white. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah, I know. I love Cricut vinyl mainly. I don't love all Cricut vinyl, but some Cricut vinyls I love because of the backer. It's not paper, so it doesn't stick to my mat. Just a little thing uh, I don't know if you can still see you still know. okay just a little bit okay I think there's some centers that I didn't pluck out Tina says why original maker um that's just going to be probably maybe because the few maker threes that we've worked with here in the office maybe we just got lemons I don't know we got two and they were terrible so like we've had to send we've had since we've been working here we've the first one 
there was some kind of issue, so we like sent it back and they sent us a new one. And then the second one ended up giving us issues. Yeah, and I was like, what the and heck? The, the machines that sit on our craft table that we use literally every single day are both original makers. Yeah. And I've never really had an issue. The only issue that I have is my maker right now. I have to get a new um, housing for my scoring stylus because my store, scoring stylus tends to pop out. My scoring stylus But that's because also, it's how many years old now? Right. And mine did the same thing. Could you come get me some rubbing alcohol? Absolutely. Positively. I feel like I just had some. Um, my housing also doesn't work on my first maker that I had that I was using forever. But, oh. y'all, we use our machines, like, hard. We put them to the test. So, the Maker 3 just didn't. I don't know. It just, they kept messing up. So, I was kind of disappointed. And, like, the Maker has just worked better for us. But, listen. If you ordered a maker and you have one on the way, I see Tina like, oh no, they're not all going to be like that. Some people may have the same issues with the maker, original maker. Right. You know what I mean? They wouldn't have made a new bottle if they didn't have some issues, in my opinion. I think it's, so. but the good part about it is Cricut is very good about sending new machines if your oh. machine for some reason is a lemon. They're very, very good about that. Yes, they really are. So I'm cleaning my surface with rubbing alcohol right now to make sure that it's completely clean. You need to do this with all surfaces before you apply vinyl. And I've got it sitting on a burnishing tool. This is just holding my cup kind of in place. And then I'm just gonna cut a small piece of this transfer tape. This is very possibly heat transfer transfer tape, but you know what? It works for me. While it, it may not be, I don't know. While everybody, I know that I feel like a lot of people are saying, oh no, why not a Maker 3? We don't necessarily, we still love a Maker 3. Yeah. Don't get us wrong. Please don't take that the wrong <laughs> way. However, when you're looking at the price of a Maker 3 and you're looking at the price of an original Maker, if you've not bought one. And now if you plan on using smart material, then yes, you have to get a Maker 3 or an Air 3. But y'all know how we feel about smart material. But so. smart material is, um, meh. Yeah. What right. you looking for now? I need a burnishing tool. I'll just use, <laughs> use the one I'm using. So I'm going to burnish this down really good on the front. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the back. This is why strong grip transfer is going to come in good handy for y'all. If you've got it on hand, you don't have to burnish as much. Okay. So just burnishing it down. What I'm going to do is I am going to trim around my design very closely. Okay, and y'all will see why here in just a second. I'm going to leave like maybe a half of an inch all the way around. And then what I'm going to do before I go to apply this, this is our little wine glass vinyl application hack i'm going to cut slits little tiny slits all around now y'all are probably like why so whenever you apply vinyl to a curved surface it likes to create these bubbles and it kind of places the letters in like weird wonky spots but these allow me to pull everything taut without creating more bubbles that makes sense. So I'm just cutting a little slits. Now I want to use all of these little pulls to pull it, to like pull it taut, but I like to have them already cut. That way, whenever I get it onto my cup, it's already cut all the way around. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've got my wine glass. Can y'all see? And then I'm just going to pull my backing off. And everything should come with my transfer tape. So be very careful. It gets a little crazy when you're trying to remove this backer and you've got all these slits though. So just be leery. Maybe. Here we go. Now, don't do me dirty like this, transfer tape. Hold on a second. What's happening? It just won't come off of the backer. Oh, the, uh, the vinyl one? Yeah, it doesn't want, it will because I did it. I done done it and it worked just fine. 
I may start, sometimes I like to start, like I'm gonna start with this football edge because it's a longer, smoother edge. And sometimes it's good just to get a little start. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Come on, Bobby. So Kimberly said, Glowforge Aura is on my list for the next year, as is Adventure. Let's have us a conversation. Yeah. About the Aura. After I've done a little bit more research, we were going back and forth. Do we get it? Do we not get it? Do we order it? Do we not? What do we do? The price point. You know, the price point is the same as the Venture, pretty much. Um, but after researching and looking and trying to figure some things out, I realized that the Glowforge Aura is a, which is a diode laser, by the way, for no. those that didn't know, there's a difference between CO2 and a diode laser. I'm waiting to apply this so we can talk about this. <laughs> well, we can, I can hold off my conversation on the Glowforge here in a minute and you can apply. Okay. Let's do that. I'll hold off this conversation. Okay. I have things to say too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't want my head to be in it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is line this up. I'm kind of making sure that everything is straight based off of the top rim of the glass okay and then i'm just going to kind of apply this in somewhat of a taco method okay so i'm just pushing down this middle and then i'm going to work my way out okay now i'm just working this side out first All right, and then I'm gonna work my way over to the left side. The more you do these wine glasses, the easier this is, but it can be kind of wonky at first. And so your transfer tape will tend to kind of bubble up, but it's okay, because it's just the transfer tape. As long as our design is going down somewhat flat, we're all good. And we can also go in and fix any bubbles that we have. And I'm gonna show you all how I do that as well. So I'm gonna apply it with my finger and then I'm gonna go in with a burnishing tool and try to lay everything down really good, okay? Like I said, if the transfer is bumpy, no big deal. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove our transfer tape. And I can already see some areas that are gonna need some help. We can fix those. Okay, and so I can go in with my finger and work out any bubbles, any small bubbles. Now there are gonna be areas like this in the O where I'm gonna have to take my weeding tool and kind of get up under there. Try to be very careful and not stretch your vinyl when you're doing this, but you also wanna let get that flat. So I like to kind of lift it up and work out the kink, okay? Got to be very careful not to stretch it. So this is probably more of a downside to not using etching cream. But once you get good at laying that vinyl down, then you won't have as many issues. You can even take your burnishing tool and go over some of those bubbles. My O did a poor, poor, poor um, Somebody job. was asking you to move the green mat under the, so you can see the etching better. There Good idea. Go. Thanks. So I am just fidgeting with this O. I don't love how it looks. But it's on that curved surface, so you can know that's why it just didn't land right. So I'm trying to pull it up without stretching. You've got to be very careful because you will stretch this vinyl out like, so easy. Just pulling it up, pulling it up. This whole edge is jacked up. Okay. And then I'm just going to flatten it back down with my thumb. Okay. And then you can go back in with your burnishing tool. And make sure everything is down. 
And there you have it. Now the O, I'm not super satisfied with that O. I could always recut and reapply though, which is great. The great thing about this vinyl, it looks consistent too. Like sometimes when you etch, the, if the glass is not good, uh -huh. you'll have inconsistencies in the etching, but here you're not gonna have as much. So can y'all see that good? Yeah. And that's it, that's it. Okay, love it. Here, <laughs> we'll bring our little babies over here. Cheers. 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 Classy until kickoff. Just wish it actually had something in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now the give... ceiling question star. I should have known it. Okay. This is what we always say. You don't need to seal high quality vinyl. Right. Okay. Sometimes when we put sealants like Mod Podges and stuff over vinyl, it gives this like really not sorry, there's a feather floating around. This really like unattractive look on it, especially in a clean, crispy on a glass. wine glass. Yes. yes. So you don't need to seal it. This vinyl is high quality. Like I said, we're going to do a wash test. So you all can really see how it does. I really think it's going to be fine in the washer. Yeah. Or in the dishwasher. So. Yeah, we'll just throw it in the washing machine. <laughs> we'll just glass. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so that's our spiel on sealing vinyl. Now, back to our spiel on the Glow Forge. Yes. And everything else. Mm -hmm. So, after doing research and after looking at the machine myself, because I'm not gonna lie, we we almost ordered it. And I'm, I'm not saying that we're not gonna order it at some point. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. If we see lots of reviews that are like, yeah, this is great, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So, my biggest issue with this is after I researched it, it is a six watt diode laser. Right. So I don't know if you all know much about wattages, things like that. Um, pretty much six watt is the lowest end on the laser, in the laser. Five, I think the, the smallest wattage on a laser that I have seen is five watts. I think our Glowforge Pro is like a 50 or 60 watt. Yeah. Or may, I could be really wrong about that. I need to um, double check that. I don't know about our Glowforge Pro, but I do know, for instance, um, our X tools that we have is a 10 watt. Yes. Which it seems like four watts, like that's not shouldn't make that big of a deal, but it kind of does when it, when it comes to speed. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to like how thickness of cuts, thickness of cut cuts, thicker items, how deep it will engrave, uh -huh. all of this different stuff. So not only that, but Omtech, which is another laser brand, if you all aren't in the laser world, if you are, then you know what brand I'm talking about. They came out with a 10 watt diode laser like a week before the Glowforge, but Glowforge is so popular and mainstream. Uh -huh. And so everyone like knows their marketing is amazing. They have good, easy to use software, but the Omtech, they came out with a laser that has a higher wattage that's $800. Yeah, but it, so, the only thing is I think it's a tabletop and it's not enclosed. Yeah, so like the X tools looks like the Glowforge yeah. and it's got that enclosed spacing. So there's like good and bad to all of it. And it's like, what do you want for your right. laser? And the other thing about the Glowforge that I'm not a huge fan of, now if you're wanting to break into the laser world, then it would be a good starter. But I, also, I honestly think that there are brands out there that have just as good of a laser mm -hmm. that you can break into. And when you catch them on sale specifically, cheaper. Right. They're cheaper. Right. So the Glowforge, wasn't it like, didn't I tell you the dimensions were like six inches in height or yes. five inches? The whole machine. The whole machine is like this big. So like, what can you lay in there to engrave that's not tiny? You're not doing tumblers. You're not doing tumblers. You're, it, any, it has to lay flat if that's the case. I mean, I don't, can you cut through quarter inch with the Aura? I didn't see it, what the thickness was. I think it's eight, an eighth of an inch, I think. Okay. It might be quarter, but I think it's eight. I mean, like, if y'all are not trying to run a laser business, like, yeah. I don't feel, it, listen, this is what I always tell people. If you're wanting to get into lasering, check for, in your community for a local maker's space. They have popped up all over the country, 
and they typically have lasers. They also typically have classes. I know Morristown has one and we do laser classes. We have an old Chinese laser, but like it's mm -hmm. like an OG laser. But a lot of people have the glow forges and stuff, and that way you can get your feet wet before you're like, let me go purchase this $1,200 laser. I'm probably going to use three times because it only cuts eighth inch thick wood, and, and it, like I don't really even want to do that. Right. Like I don't really even, I'm not really into it I mean, anymore. really, if you think about it, if you have a maker and you're cutting eighth of an inch wood, the knife blade isn't the best, but it can, your cricket can, do can it. cut eighth of an inch wood. It surely can, Yeah. I'm, and that's just, that, that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. I mean, like, realistically, how much laser engraving are you doing unless you're running, like, a Christmas ornament business or, like, something that engraves wood all the time? It just seems crazy it's if you don't. I just, I just feel like if you're going to break, if you're, want, if you're really wanting to get a laser and break into the laser world, there are so many other options out there. Um, yes. For example, April says Thunder, which is a brand, let me just go ahead and say, I've never heard of the brand Thunder, but you better believe I'm going to, as soon as we walk out that door, I'm going to be looking it up. But she said that Thunder will be, re will be releasing a desktop mm -hmm. uh, CO2 laser, oh, not yeah. a dialed laser. So for those that don't know, a CO2 layer is a lot more powerful. Yes. You have a, um, like a it's, tube. it's like a tube in the middle of it with like the compressed CO2 and the only thing is like a CO2 laser I think typically can have a shorter lifespan mm -hmm. than a diode laser because a diode laser is like a beam of light. Yes. It's the difference. But the big heavy hitter people that do lasering use CO2 lasers usually. So yeah. but so Tina says internet says it's a quarter inch thick. Oh for the glow forge. forge. Okay. Yeah. Okay well you know like we said there's there's a um, Facebook group called That Mom with the Laser. Shout out, That Mom with the Laser. I have been in that group for yes. years now. They have so much good information. You all can join it. You don't, it's not like a membership. No. You can just join the group. Yeah. And you can start, like when the Aura came out, they were on it. They, they were getting their opinions. Yes. They were letting everybody know, like, the down low. So, Y'all get in that group if you're wanting to learn about lasers. There's lots of good information. Yeah, so. they're they're a really very welcoming group. We love that mom with a laser group here. Yes, yeah, very for sure. welcoming group. Yeah. So, anyways, um, off of the laser subject, if you missed the beginning, we're extending our sublimation cell. Um, if you're like, okay, Just forget today. a laser, I'm trying to be a sublimator. Um, one day only, we're extending the seventy dollars off the uh, sublimation course. It's a one time only. Payment. It's 127, right? Yep. Okay. 127, y'all, you have to do this. If you are like, I don't know if that's even what I want to do right now. Lauren did a webinar last Thursday. I need y'all to watch it and then decide because she goes more into depth and kind of touches on like how it is once you get within the membership. Right. I'm sorry, within the course. Yeah. So does anybody have any questions? Any questions about the class? About lasers, about uh, Tia lasers. says mom with a laser. It's a Facebook group. It's called That Mom with a Laser. Yes. Tim Wall, as we Tim for Wall for short, as we call it here in the office. Yeah, yeah. That Mom with a Laser. It's a Facebook group, free to join. If you have any questions about laser, they're a great group. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Um, also, if you all were curious about how to create the sublim the three D sublimation tumblers. There was a video released yesterday. Mm -hmm. Go check that out, and Alicia will teach you exactly how to create those 3D sublimation tumblers. Yes, so cute. Yes, no clear yeah, acrylics. No, that's the only. That's the biggest downfall with the diode is no clear acrylics. Just, and sometimes blue. Sometimes you can't cut blue acrylic with a diode laser. Yeah, it's something to do it's with that weird. light, that beam of light. It just mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't work. Best inkjet printer, large format. Mm. We don't have a large format inkjet printer. We have a large format sublimation printer, but we don't have a large format inkjet printer. Just FYI. Cheryl, so, what are you printing large format on an inkjet printer? Like printable DTV? I don't know. Wait, I can print pretty, I can print those big sheets on our little cannon out here. Like how big? Like, I'm pretty sure they're 13 by 19. Am I crazy? Am I, mean, I tripping I right now? I think you might be a little trippy. I'm going to check it. <laughs> I'm also, gonna... somebody asked what X tool model we have. We have the M1, the enclosed yes. M1 with the riser bed on the bottom. That way we can do tumblers. 
it was one of those things that we got it, we played around with it, and then we had a lot of other things come up, and I've not had a chance to play around with it anymore because we even have the cup turner that I want to put a Stanley oh, in and engrave. We but I've not had a chance. <laughs> we want to, though. We will at some point. We have point. good intentions. I know that Canon TS 9500, I know that it can cut 12 by 12, or print 12 by 12 sheets. So that's pretty, it can do like full scrapbook sheet papers. So that's like okay. sort of odd format, but okay. Sorry, last week's class on Puff Vinyl, does it work with a Cricut heat press? Yes. I, th I don't think it does it. I think it does work. Yeah, so yeah. If, oh, she's letting us know. Yeah, okay, so okay. as long as the, as long as your Puff Vinyl will fit within your heat plate and you can keep the pressure on, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. You can't do like this corner of, and then this corner, and then this corner with Puff Vinyl. You have to do it all at one time. Right. Okay. Equal amounts of pressure. Equal amounts. And heat. Yes. All right. Well, so tomorrow's live stream is at 2.30 Eastern Standard Two, Time. 2.30. It's normally 2 at 2.30. Normally at 1.30, but we had some things happen. So 2.30 tomorrow, um, Lauren is going to be doing some last minute teacher gifts. Teacher gifts uh, for your teachers that teachers actually want coming from a teacher. Yes. I mean, you can't beat it. Lauren knows what they want. She was the teacher, or is a teacher, I guess, technically still. Was. See, I'm the teacher to you guys, but I'm not in the classroom. Yeah, but so. sort of. Sort of. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, well, we will see y'all tomorrow at 2.30. 2.30. Right. Bye, guys. Bye.